Approximately two years ago, I was working as an engineer for a relatively new company in my area. I hadn't been out of school very long, but I was excited that my degree at least seemed to be paying off so far. The company I had worked for had a large local client base, and one of our new contracts was developing and designing a new set of exhibits for a local zoo. On paper, it seemed like a fairly simple job, but one that I found to be quite unique. Coming out of school, I didn't ever think I'd be working for or at a zoo on a job. I always envisioned larger, more commercial properties. For this job, we were going to have to work overnight so that the construction didn't upset the animals during the day when the zoo was filled with guests. We worked for about two weeks or so with no issues. We did have to make a few adjustments to our original plans and design, but it wasn't anything the construction team couldn't handle. Every night at around 3 a.m., we would head to a local diner for a lunch break and some needed food. But on this specific night, I decided to stay back and work on one of the more complex locking mechanisms for one of the newly constructed exhibits. I remember finishing up about 45 minutes later and noticed the crew hadn't arrived back yet. I started cleaning up my area when I suddenly heard a noise. It almost sounded like someone bumping into a workstation, like a scrape against the floor. I just figured it was one of my crew finally getting back from their longer than normal break and continued picking up my tools and scrap supplies. No more than 30 seconds later, I started to hear more noises. This time it sounded like banging on the side of a door. Slightly annoyed, I made my way to the door to make sure it wasn't a staff member or worse, someone who shouldn't be on the property. I opened the door and saw nobody. Nothing was there. I made my way through the door over to the cafeteria where chairs were out of place and several tables had been flipped over. At this point I thought maybe a group of teenagers had snuck onto the property as it was well known to the public that our company was working overnight construction at the zoo. I yelled out and asked, who's there? To which I got no response. At this point I began to get angry because any damage that occurred on my watch would be my responsibility and... I knew my team was too careful to disrespect our client and leave a mess like this. As I proceeded through the cafeteria, I started to hear little shuffles coming from the kitchen area behind the counter. I was about 10 feet from the counter when my heart felt like it literally stopped beating in my chest. What I saw made me freeze in fear. It almost felt like I couldn't move, like I was stuck in a dream. Standing in front of me was four monkeys or apes. From what I remembered, I counted at least four and they seemed to be exploring the kitchen. My yelling must have alerted them because one or two of them was staring at me. I tried to slowly and calmly make my way back toward the door. The animals were enormous. They were good size and I had no idea if they were violent or docile. When I was just a couple of feet from the door, the monkeys started howling and screaming like crazy. They were screeching and started banging on the walls. I turned and ran as fast as I could into the main office. To my horror, at least two of the apes had followed me and were now banging on the door that I had just shut behind myself. The sound of their cries and wailing was so unsettling, I actually was starting to fear for my safety. From the office, I called my coworkers and told them what happened and to stay a safe distance upon their return. And I also called zoo management authorities so they could handle what seemed to be wild animals loose at the zoo. After only about 10 minutes, the proper authorities showed up to take care of the situation. At that point, the monkeys were no longer in my line of vision, so I'm not sure how they captured them and got them back into their exhibit. After an investigation into the matter, it turns out that some of the work that was being done at the zoo caused an electrical malfunction, which allowed a few doors to come open at some of the exhibits. Every time this story gets brought up, someone says that the lion exhibit was left open and... I'm lucky it didn't escape and try to eat me alive. I also get made fun of because my terror and reaction to the event made staff think that I was being chased by a thousand pound gorilla when in reality it was a much smaller species. As much as people like to joke about the situation, it was truly a horrifying experience. I know this isn't your typical scary story that you would find on this forum, but when you're staring at a wild animal and they're looking right back at you, it's completely rational to fear for your safety, or even your life.
First off, let me just say that I think this story is a bit more weird than scary, but I figured I'd share it anyway. Several years ago, I got a job offer from a fairly large zoo in the city about 30 minutes from where I lived. I'll keep the name anonymous for obvious reasons. This particular zoo was always packed to the brim with guests no matter what time of year it was. Unlike a lot of other zoos which utilize volunteers, this zoo actually paid most of its workers and in fact paid them quite well. Side note, I've always been a big animal nerd so obviously I was really excited to be actually working for a zoo. I was hired and trained by my boss who was a really beautiful woman. Let's call her Heather, she was probably in her late 30s or early 40s. I mention her looks because after about a month of training, I noticed she was beginning to be kind of flirtatious with me, which looking back on it, I realize is completely unprofessional and I probably should have just ignored it. But being a guy in my mid-twenties, of course, I occasionally flirted back. One day after work, we were walking to our cars together and very bluntly and unexpectedly, she asked if I wanted to go out and grab a drink sometime. I quickly accepted, not taking into account all of the potential ramifications. I really like this job and would this jeopardize my employment? Also, Heather is easily 10 plus years older than me and we don't really know nothing about each other than the small talk from work. We hadn't even had conversations via text or anything like that outside of work. Either way, I decided to just go with it and see what happens. We went on a couple of dates which honestly went pretty well. I managed not to make a fool of myself and seemed to be making a good impression. Heather was definitely, uh, weird, I guess. I guess you could say that, but I blamed it on the age difference and the fact that it seemed we really didn't have much in common other than our love for animals. I basically would sit there for most of the time and listen to her talk. She routinely made references I didn't understand, so I perfected the smile and nod. As we saw each other more, she became over-the-top flirtatious and affectionate, even in public, which I did actually find a little awkward. After about a month or so and several dates with Heather, things started to take a turn for the worst. She would routinely make really weird jokes about her exes, like morbid, violent jokes that you wouldn't really expect someone to say to a person you've only been seeing for about a month. As her weird and irrational comments began to continue... I tried to distance myself from her both in and out of work. She must have known that I was starting to lose interest because she started calling me up to her office at the zoo to talk. One day in particular I went up there and she began to cry and beg me to stay with her. She stated that she knew I was losing interest and that she wanted to be better for me. That she could be a better person and a better partner. Now as previously stated being in my 20s my first instinct was to end it and move on. I don't mean this in a disrespectful sense, but we had only known each other for a month or so and we still didn't truly know one another, or at least in my eyes we didn't. So it seemed a little out of the norm to be having situations like this already in our relationship. Anyway, I like to think I'm a nice person and somewhat of a pushover. I didn't like seeing anyone upset, so when she broke down, I obliged and reassured her that I wasn't leaving her or going to hurt her. It was a mistake. The next day she texted me to meet her in her office. She told me to meet her at 2.15 and to not be late. Wanting to surprise her I showed up at 2pm and brought her a handful of flowers that I picked from around the zoo. She wasn't there yet and her door was locked with a key code. I knew the key code, but so did several other staff that had to frequent her office. I went in and sat in her desk chair thinking I'll playfully scare her when she came in. As I sat down at her desk, I noticed her computer was on and opened. On the screen were really graphic images, like dismembered body parts and such, something you might see out of the movie Saw. As I scrolled down, I saw numerous photos of me, but not ones that I knew she had took of me. Some of them were random shots of me at work, and others were outside of work. Times when we weren't even together. I got up from the computer completely freaked out and disturbed. A moment later she walked in and looked completely disheveled. She asked what I was doing there and started screaming that I was spying on her just like her exes used to. I insisted that I'd just got there a little early and wasn't trying to spy on her, but she wasn't having it. Heather backed me into a corner continuing to shout at me 
and then abruptly stopped and walked over to her desk, sat down and smiled and said, I have something for you. That's when instinct kicked in and I decided it was time to go. I told her that I had to leave. She told me I better not or I would be sorry, but obviously I ran out of the room anyway. I quit that job and changed most of my personal info including cell phone number and social media pages. When I applied for the job I used my parents' address on the application. She had never actually been to my apartment. We always hung out at her place which I was extremely grateful for. Since the incident in the office she has tried to follow me on social media. Blocked. And even showed up at my parents' house looking for me. I gave my parents a heads up about the situation so they gave her some lines saying that the previous tenant, myself, had moved out of state. I'm just happy I left her office when I did that day. My instincts from the start told me that there wasn't something a little off about her behavior and I probably should have listened to them sooner. I have so many unanswered questions. Was she truly psychotic or did she just have a weird fetish? What would have happened to me if I stayed around to find out? I'm not the best writer, so please bear with me as I try to write out these stories for you guys. Back in 2016, I had one of my favorite jobs of all time. I worked part-time at a zoo, which was amazing. I loved animals, and my job responsibilities included feeding the animals, which seemed like the easiest job ever. Everything seemed to be going so well, until I met my coworker Drake. Drake was one of the zookeepers at the zoo. He was pretty reserved and didn't seem to say much to anyone. He would come into work, clean the cages, pick up waste, and go about his business. He was always fairly nice to me, polite and very timid when we had any interactions. He was tall and overweight. He had short black hair with a patchy beard. In a very shy and timid voice, he would always say, Good morning, Dana. And I, of course, always said hello. How are you doing today? But he was usually out of sight before he could even respond. Well, one October night, the zoo I worked for was hosting some sort of late night party for offices in our city. It was a pretty neat affair with tons of food, alcohol, and people networking their business. A bunch of us were scheduled to work late to help the guests and clean up after the event was over. I mingled with guests for a while, showing them animals and giving them some basic facts about them. I noticed Drake was there changing trash bags, and when I saw him... I waved just being nice and he didn't wave back. It didn't bother me and I just kept being myself and assisting the guests in the park. At about 10pm guests were starting to leave. Before we cleaned up I decided to use the restroom because I hadn't had a chance to go all night. Instead of using the main restroom where everybody was huddled, I went into the administrative building to use the private employee bathroom just because it was much cleaner and more private. The lights in this building were motion sensor and would go out if it didn't sense any movement for five minutes. I went to the bathroom, washed my hands, fixed my makeup and my hair. As I left the bathroom I had a feeling of somebody following me or was behind me. I reached to grab my phone and realized I had left it in the bathroom. So I turned around walking back into the woman's room and that's when I saw him. Drake was standing in the ladies bathroom holding my cell phone. I freaked out and said, Drake, that's my phone. Can you please give it back to me? What were you doing in the women's room? He was just smiling at me with his yellow teeth. I'll never forget what he said next. Now we can be together, Dana. It's just the two of us. And after this sentence, he came at me quickly. He wasn't running. He just made a quick motion in my direction and almost power walked towards me much quicker than I assumed he could move. As I moved away from him, he continued to yell, Just come back, Dana. I ran out towards the last of the few employees left within the zoo and told them what happened. Everybody told me I was jumping into conclusions and he was just trying to give me my phone back and stuff like that. If that's the case, then why was he in the women's bathroom in a building that wasn't even being used that night? One of my co-workers finally spoke up to my defense and stated that she had noticed that Drake seemed to be following me around for most of the night and noticed that neither of us were with the rest of the group, but knew we were still on the clock. She mentioned she was going to head towards the bathroom because 
She knew I went over that way and hadn't yet returned. A few co-workers walked back over to the bathroom with me and we found my phone on the ground with no sign of Drake. The rest of the night concluded either incident, but I did file an official complaint to my boss. A couple of weeks went by without any real issues. I began thinking to myself, maybe I was overreacting and maybe Drake was just trying to help me. Fast forward to one night when I was getting ready to leave the zoo for the night at around 6pm. I walked all the way to my car and there he was. Drake was actually in my back seat. Not hiding at all, just sitting in my back seat like a passenger. Instead of flipping out, I just decided to very quickly and quietly run back inside and call the authorities. This time, there was no mistaking it. He had broken into my car and was just sitting in it. I called the cops and they arrived and found that the only thing he had on him was trash bags and duct tape. They detained him, but I'm not sure if he was actually arrested, perhaps because he broke into my car. I'm not entirely sure what happened after that. I quit that job the next day even though it was the first job I ever actually loved. I have since moved out of that state and am thankful that I never have to worry about running into Drake again. So this is a story that happened to me several years ago while I was still in college. I used to babysit on the weekends for some extra cash. On this particular day, I had to babysit a five-year-old girl that we'll call Mary and her two-year-old brother that we'll call Ronnie. It was a beautiful, sunny spring day, so I decided to take the kids to the zoo. Ronnie was still a handful, so I had to have a stroller for him, but Mary was very tall and well-behaved for her age, so she needed to stay close to me. Once we go to the zoo, it proved to be more of a challenge than I thought. Ronnie didn't want to stay in the stroller, and Mary was so excited I couldn't keep her from running all around the zoo every time she saw a new animal. Within minutes, I was super embarrassed because Mary, with all her running and dancing around, she accidentally bumped into a very tall gentleman. The man was super nice and charming about it. He looked at Mary and, in a really smooth and sweet voice, said, Hey, don't worry about it, sweetie. Accidents happen and then looked at me and winked. Relieved that he wasn't some jerk, I said thank you and walked away. About an hour in, I was already exhausted from trying to keep the two kids calm. Ronnie started to act up, and I had trouble calming him down. I turned around after only a minute, and Mary was gone. She was just sitting on the bench next to me. I'm not even a parent, but the feeling of losing a child in such a huge place made me sick. I thought I was going to cry and throw up at the same time. I started to scream her name in absolute panic, the loudest I think I have ever screamed in my entire life. After what seemed like hours, but actually was only a couple of minutes, I spotted Mary from across the way. She was with the man from before. They were standing in front of a mountain goat exhibit and was pointing to the animals at the top of the mountain. I ran over and screamed, Hey, what do you think you're doing? The man turned and put his hands up and stated in a smooth voice, Whoa, 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 easy there, ma'am. I saw young Mary here walking alone and just wanted to make sure she got back to you without raising any alarm bells for the poor girl, I promise. I'm not sure if that was the truth, and honestly, I didn't care. I grabbed Mary's arm and started to walk away. We left the zoo at that moment. I was so scared and just felt sick to my stomach about the whole thing. I was, however, somewhat relieved that everyone was safe, and that was honestly the most important thing. As I was getting the kids all situated in the car, I noticed that the same guy was standing outside the entrance of the zoo, staring at my car. He was waving, so I pretended I didn't see him. That night, the kids went back home, and I left out the part about the creepy man when I told the parents about the zoo. I didn't think it really needed to be said as the events of that day were traumatic enough and, to be fair, maybe he did just see her walking alone and was trying to help. Either way, I still got a major creeper vibe from him. All night long I thought about this situation and what I should have done differently and how something could have happened to those poor innocent children. I couldn't help but feel so guilty and upset. I cried for most of the night. Still feeling sick to my stomach, I decided I wanted to go see my boyfriend, 
He literally lived three houses away, and I could quietly walk out the back door without waking my parents. As I walked out of my back door quietly and started to make my way to the back gate, my heart stopped. The man from the zoo was outside of my house. He was looking into my bedroom window. He didn't see me by some miracle, and I ran to my boyfriend's house, called him, and hid on his front porch. Thankfully, my boyfriend called the police, and they were there in almost three minutes flat. The guy was arrested for trespassing, and I can honestly say I had no clue who this man was, but he seemed to want to find out more about me. I still have nightmares about this event and wonder what this person's intentions were. I'm just thankful that nothing else worse happened that night. So let me start this story by telling you that the events of this story are something I can never fully explain. To this day, I'm still not sure if I believe what I saw with my own eyes. I'm hoping that sharing this story will bring some answers or suggestions as to what I may have experienced. The story happened last summer. I live in the Midwestern United States. My hometown has a lot of beautiful sights to see and is frequented by tourists for the views and subsequent nature. In close proximity to my house is a local zoo. If you cut through a small wooded area behind my backyard, it would lead to a fence that surrounded the aforementioned zoo. I don't know if this particular fence led to any animal exhibits. I think if you went far enough, you would get to another fence that had goats or something. That fence, from what I remember, was impossible to climb. It was either electric or too tall to manage. The fence that could be found from the small wooded area was easy enough to climb. A few close friends were home from college and we decided that we were going to sneak over the first fence. We didn't want to do anything bad, we just loved the idea of the thrill of being in or near the zoo in the middle of the night. Apparently some of the other people that we were there with knew a way to actually get into the zoo from the wooded area, avoiding the second fence that I had mentioned earlier. Well, one night, six of us decided to walk through the zoo. Getting in was actually much easier than I thought it would be. Sometimes when you go to the zoo, the animals just lay around and bask in the sun, and they tell you at night they are much more active. Well, on this night, most of the animals that were usually out were not, and it was much more quiet than I expected. We wanted to walk by the wolves because at night they were usually really active, and it would be cool to see. But as we walked by the wolves, they weren't so much howling as they were crying and whimpering. It was almost disturbing to hear and made us feel uncomfortable, like they were in pain or scared or something. We kept walking and just felt off about the entire experience. After a few more minutes, we decided to turn around and go home. The fun, thrilling time that we had thought it would be didn't seem to live up to the expectations. My one friend thought we should go by the wolves one more time to see if they were acting more normal. As we turned the corner and looked into the exhibit, I saw something that I can still to this day not comprehend. There was a gigantic beast, I don't know what else to call it, maybe about five or six foot, standing on two legs. It looked like the wolf kind of, but had some characteristics of a human. When I say wolf-like, I mean it had the head of a wolf, it seemed like, a huge snout with what looked like razor-sharp teeth, but it stood on two legs like a human. As a result of standing on its legs is what made the beast look massively huge. It smelled horrible, almost like rotten eggs or sulfur. It didn't make much noise, but the wolves in the exhibit were snarling and howling so loudly that we had to cover our ears. We all stood in collective panic, not understanding what we were seeing, without even thinking, and we just ran. We ran as fast as we could and we thought we could hear something chasing us through the trees, but we still just ran and didn't even care. We arrived at my house and locked the door. We were all obviously freaked out and kept stating that we couldn't shake the sulfuric smell. It felt like it was attached to our clothes somehow. Nothing of note ever happened again regarding this event. We tried to just shake it off and chalk it up to something logical. We haven't gone back to the zoo yet, and honestly, I don't think I will ever go back there again. If anybody has any insight as to what we may have seen, please let me know. 
I don't remember any other physical traits other than what I had already mentioned and that horrible, horrible smell. I will try and include as many details as I can from this experience. About five years ago, I was concluding my freshman year of college. I was the type of student who always got good grades and was never in trouble. I think I got detention in high school once and probably cried about it. With said personality trait, very rarely did I do anything that was outside of my comfort zone. But I was human and in college, so obviously I had made some stupid mistakes. Well, none more stupid than the situation I am about to describe. I had about a week left on campus before returning home for the summer. Since I wouldn't see most of my college friends until fall, I wanted to spend as much time as I could with them before I went home. About 15 minutes from our campus is an old abandoned zoo. The zoo was apparently a huge attraction back in the 1960s, but by the 80s the zoo couldn't afford to keep its doors open and eventually shut down. Over the next couple of decades, the zoo had just sat there rotting and remaining mostly untouched. However, I believe that many of the cages and pathways still remain and are not quite overgrown. On campus, it's also been a running story or rumor that there are ghosts and other nefarious things that dwell in the zoo, and that's why it remains untouched. My friends and I were major skeptics and didn't buy this local legend one bit, the only reason it was abandoned and still standing is because no one wanted to spend the money to tear it down. We thought since we only had about a week left, we would go to the zoo and explore. One of my friends wanted to film the field trip to prove that the ghost and goblins theory was completely non-sane. I obviously tried to talk everyone out of it because I thought we would get caught and then arrested for trespassing. But I was outvoted and didn't want to seem like I was afraid, so I went along with the plan. Around 9 or 10 p.m. we went and got some late night fast food and then proceeded to make our way towards the zoo. The front entrance obviously had several large locks, but how its facility was designed made it easy to get in. You first entered a parking lot, and then from the parking lot you could walk up to the main entrance. Obviously you could no longer really see most of the parking lot, but you could see the welcoming fence embroidered with shrubbery. All he had to do was be careful and climb over the tall rusted fence. I think it was able to deter most people with the same idea because the fence was pretty high and a misstep or fall could have caused an injury, possibly something serious. As we walked around the zoo at night filming and trying to snap pictures in the dark, we were all quietly laughing and joking, probably to cut some of the tension as we were technically breaking the law. As we approached the back of the zoo, we went into an old building that either served as some kind of bird exhibit or perhaps a reptile habitat. Once in the building, we noticed a door that had light shining from the bottom of it, which made absolutely no sense as the zoo had been closed for decades. My one friend laughed and yelled, There's the ghost, we found it. He insisted that we check it out, even though I had a sinking feeling in my stomach that we should just leave. My other friend Joey thankfully spoke up and suggested that we do in fact leave and not proceed any further. It's easy to say what you think we would do in a situation like this, but when you're young and with your friends, you don't always choose the most logical decision. We decided to proceed and try to open the door. It was unlocked and we immediately noticed it was a steep staircase that led down into a very illuminated room. This room at the bottom of the stairs was completely new. Well, new in comparison to the dilapidated zoo. The room had computers and other strange-looking hard drive server type things everywhere. It looked like something straight out of a movie. In the back of the room was a glass window. We tentatively approached the glass and looked through. It was another room, with cages in them. Dozens of cages. There we saw monkeys, cats, dogs, birds, and even fish all with numbers and letters above each cage. On the far right of that room was an entire wall of creepy animals. I could see snakes, lizards, and tarantulas. Next to this glass window was a big wraparound desk with tons of papers with equations and other mathematical symbols. There were tons of papers that looked to be printed from a computer that was illegible, just symbols. Next to this desk was a door. 
As we all stared at our surroundings, just absolutely in awe at whatever this was, we noticed that the door cracked open and made a squeaking sound. We darted out of sight and hid behind a big, what I believed to be, server. In behind the door walked three men, two middle-aged men with white lab coats on. Both men had scruffy beards and long hair. The other basically was the complete opposite, a younger-looking guy with dirty blonde, slick back hair. He had a very nice suit on and was not adorned with a lab coat. He asked the two men in the white jackets, So how's everything going with progress? And the one man responded with a very soft and almost nervous voice, Well, it's going very well. A couple of setbacks, but we're almost there. The man in the suit looked annoyed and said, Well, I'm here to see a test. Both men in the white lab coats looked at each other and just kind of nodded. The man in the suit walked over to the window and stared through it rather intently, and the two walked over to a computer and said, Okay, well here we go then. At that moment we heard an extremely loud noise and major vibrations coming from beyond the window. There were tons of light being emitted from the window. We looked at each other and knew that this was our chance, so we ran as quietly as we could. We sprinted out to the car and left as fast as we could. I slept horribly for the next week not knowing what we saw that night and if we ended up leaving undetected. It's been a few years now since those events and there thankfully have been no further incident. I know how improbable and impossible this story sounds. I've told this story a couple of times to groups and friends online and even my now fiancé, but no one has ever believed me so I seldom ever bring it up. It wasn't until a couple of weeks ago when I read something on the internet about gene splicing and something about animal hybrids, it got me thinking about that night. Did we really see some type of experiment? I guess my only advice is that if you think something is wrong and doesn't seem right, chances you're probably right. We stumbled across something on accident and by chance and were lucky enough to get out of there without further consequence. Hey friends, thanks for listening. Be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell to be alerted of all future narrations. If you got a story, be sure to submit them to my subreddit, r Let's Read Official, and give and receive feedback from the community, and maybe even hear your story featured on the next video. And join my Discord to interact with me and other listeners directly. And if you want to support me even more, grab early access to all future narrations for just $1 a month on Patreon, and maybe even pick up some Let's Read merch on Spreadshirt. Links in the bio. Thanks so much, friends, and I'll see you again soon.